Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss the first two problems of Code Forces on 887 which was written for division 2. So today's contest was not very good for me. I tried solving the third problem very hard but I couldn't solve it during the contest. So anyways, we are just going to discuss the first two problems for this video and let us quickly start with the first problem. So this particular problem is called desorting. Now they say that we have been given an array and it is called sorted if it is arranged in non-decreasing order. That means two, two adjacent elements can be equals but the first element cannot be greater than the second element. So this is what they mean by a sorted array. Now we have been given one type of operation and that is we can choose any index and we can take all the elements from a1 to ai. If we have chosen the index i, we can take all the elements from a1 to ai and add one to it. Now we can subtract one from all the elements from a i plus one to a f n, right. Now we have to define the minimum number of operations such that the array is not sorted. So let me just explain you this particular thing with the help of an example. So we are going to take this particular sample test case. So you see we have the values 1, 8, 10 and 13, right. Now what will happen? Let us say you are at this particular index and you want to make this element greater than any element present to the right of it. As soon as an element, let us say we have two indexes i and j such that i is less than j. As soon as any element a of i becomes greater than a of j, that means our array will be non-sorted, right. So I want to take this element and I want to make it greater than any one of these elements. Right. It should be greater than at least one of the elements present after it. So if I want to make it greater than at least one of the elements present after it, it is most obvious to take the smallest element among them. Why would I take the smallest element? I just want that i should be less than j and ai should be greater than aj. Now I have no constraints on the value of j or the index j. I can choose any of these positions such that it occurs after my current index and I want to make it such that my value of a of i is greater than a of j. So if I am allowed to do, if I am allowed to increment a of i and I am allowed to decrement a of j, it would be most optimal to, this, to choose the smallest value of a of j possible, right. So this is my task, to choose the smallest value of a of j so that I can find the minimum number of steps. Now what will be the number of steps when we have figured out a value of a of i, a of j, right. So let us first discuss this. Let us say I have 1 here and let us say I have 3 here. So that difference dx is going to be 2, right. Now what will be the number of operations required to make this number greater than this number, right. So in one operation what will happen? Both will become equal to 2 and in the second operation this will become 3 and this will become 1, right. So we required two number of operations. Now let me take one more example. Let us say this is 1 here and this is 4 here. Now the value of dx is going to be 3, right. Now in one operation what will happen? This will become 2 and this will become 3. In the second operation what will happen? This is going to become 4 and this is going to become 2. So this particular element has become greater than the second element. So if you try a couple of more examples like these, you will observe that whenever you find the value of dx, your number of steps required to make the first element greater than the second element would be equal to dx plus 1 divided by 2 and its seal value, right. So these will be the number of operations required to make this first element greater than the second element when the difference between them is dx. This formula will help you find the correct answer. Now what you can do is for each element you can just traverse through it and let us say I am at the first position, I want to find the smallest element among the remaining elements. So for this I can maintain something like a suffix array, I can maintain a suffix array which will store let us say suffix of i is going to store the minimum element, minimum element among i, i plus 1, i plus 2 and so on up to n, right. So suffix of i is going to store the minimum element in the range i to n, right. So whenever I am at any index, let us say I am at this particular element 10 and it is at index 0, 1, 2. So if I am at index 2, I can find the smallest element after it by doing suffix of 3 that is i plus 1. 
So once I know what is the smallest element here, I can find the value of Tx and from the value of Tx, I can find the number of operations. So for each element, I will know the number of operations precisely and I can choose the minimum among them. So let me show you the code for this particular problem. So you see what I have done is I have taken an integer n and I have taken an input vector. So I initialize a vector called nin. So this is going to store my suffix minimum and I initialize my last element with nin of n minus 1 with v of n minus 1. Now I make a reverse for loop from n minus 2 till greater than minus 1 and I update the value of nin of i as minimum of v of i comma nin of i plus 1. Now I am going to initialize my best variable. So this is going to be my answer. And I've initialized with infinity and infinity is 10 to the power 18. So what I've done is I'm just traversing through all the elements. Since there will be no elements after the last element, I'm only going till less than n minus 1. And I calculate the value of dx as nin of i plus 1 minus v of i. So if dx is less than 0, that means the smallest element after the current element is smaller than my current element. Then in that case, my answer can be 0 only, right? So I update my best as minimum of best power 0. Now, otherwise, I'll just increment the value of dx and I'll find the value of dx plus 1 by 2. So basically, dx plus 1 by 2 will help me to find dx by 2 seal value, right? So if I ever if I ever want to find a by 2 seal value, I can use a plus 1 by 2. So this is what I've used here. I can update my best as minimum of best comma this particular value. And in the end, I can always print the best value. So let us move on to the second problem. So this particular problem says that we have been given two integers n and k. Now we have to figure out how many Fibonacci like sequences of length k can be formed with the with n as the kth element of the sequence. So we want to form a Fibonacci sequence of length k and we want the value of n to be the last element of this particular sequence. Now what is a Fibonacci like sequence? It should be a sequence consisting of non-decreasing and non-negative integers as well as f of i is equals to f of i minus 1 plus f of i minus 2. Now the first two values f1 and f2 can be any value, it's just that it should be non-negative values. Now this question has also given us the constraints on n and k which is 2 into 10 to the power 5 for n and 10 to the power 9 for k. Now for each values of n and k we have to find the answer. So let me just explain you this thing with the help of this example. So they have also written it very briefly here. So we are going to discuss this particular test case. In this test case, they are saying that the value of n is 22 and the value of k is 4. So basically, we have to find a Fibonacci-like sequence of four elements. Now among these four elements, the last element is going to be 22. And these three elements can be anything. We have to find out how many ways are there to fill these three elements such that they form a Fibonacci-like sequence. Right. So in this case, there are four such ways. And all four of them are displayed here. So you can also verify it. So these are all valid answers. Right. So you can also verify it that 6 plus 8 is 14 and 14 plus 8 is 22. Right. Now 4 plus 9 is 13 and 13 plus 9 is 22 again. So and 10 plus 2 is 12 and 12 plus 10 is 22. So this is absolutely correct and these are Fibonacci like sequences. Now our question is how do we find such sequences? Now first of all, let us have two important observations. The first one is a more mathematical kind of observation. Let's say I want my starting numbers f1 and f2 to be as small as possible. What is the smallest value of f1 and f2 that I can take? Let's say if I try to take 0 and 0, what will happen? Now 0, 0 will be written like this. Their sum will be again 0 and the sum of these two will be again 0. So we are not going to go anywhere and all the values are going to be 0. So this is absolutely not what we want. There will not be any Fibonacci sequence like this. Now my next option is to increment one of them. So I increment this particular value and I see that I can take 0, 1. Then the sum of these two will be 1 and then the sum of these two will be 2. So this is one of the ways to form a Fibonacci sequence and I can see that the values are uh, progressing gradually, right? So it is not all 0 like the previous thing. Now, if this is the sequence, if this is the sequence, what values can I form? So I, uh, through a quick Google search, I found out this particular table. So in this uh, sequence, they have listed all the Fibonacci numbers and you can see that this is starting from 1, 1 instead of 0, 1. So that doesn't really matter. But uh, we see that uh, around uh, number 29, that is the 29th Fibonacci number, the value is 
roughly 5 into 5 power 5 right so these are five digits after 5 so this is roughly 5 to 10 to the power 5 now let me just write it i am just saying that the 29th 29th digit is going to be 5 into 10 to the power 5 so this is not exact this is just a rough estimation now my value of n the constraints on the value of n was 2 into 10 to the power 5 that means if i take f1 is equal to 0 and f2 is equal to 1 i will be able to reach any value of n in almost 30 steps so it is 29 here i'm just saying that i can reach this value of n in at most 30 steps now if i take any other value of f1 and f2 greater than these two values obviously this is the smallest value so i cannot take a smaller value but if i take any other value greater than these values i will be able to reach this value of n in even less number of steps so you see by taking the smallest values of f1 and f2 i am able to reach and even i am able to cross this particular value of n in just 30 steps and if i take any other value for f1 and f2 for 0 and 1 i would be able to reach 2 into 10 to the power 5 in definitely less than 30 steps so 30 is the maximum upper limit that you can have on k so k was actually given up to 10 to the power 9 but you will realize that this is actually useless because if you try to form any Fibonacci sequence of let's say length 30. So if the length of your Fibonacci sequence is 30, you would already be crossing the maximum limit for n. So there is no uh, like real use of making more than 30 elements. Now I know that the number of elements in my Fibonacci sequence is going to be at most 30. So I am just writing it that I will have at most 30 elements. Right, so this is my first observation. Now, in a Fibonacci sequence, you will observe. Now, let's say I have three values in my Fibonacci sequence. Let's say this value is 100. So, let's say this value is 60 and this value is 40. Right, now I have fixed three values in my Fibonacci sequence. Now, if I try to find this uh, position or the element just previous to them, you will realize that the answer for this particular position is always fixed. There is only one answer that will form a Fibonacci sequence and that is going to be 60 minus 40. So this value is going to be 20. Only if this value is 20, only then it is going to add up and make 60. Similarly, if I try to talk about the element just before it, you will realize that the answer for this particular place is also fixed. It is going to be equal to 40 minus 20. So when it becomes 20, only then the sum of these two will be equal to this particular value. Right. So, what I am trying to say is, if you try to fix three values or the last three values, all the other values can be derived since they have only one possible answer. Right. Now, with the help of these two observations, you can essentially find your whole answer. Now, let's say I have my last element here of my Fibonacci sequence that is n. Right. Now, I also want to fix the other two elements so that I can safely form all the remaining elements, right? This is what I want. So I want to fix this particular position and this particular position. I already know that this element, let's say x will be less than equals to y. So what I can do is I can run a loop, let's say i starting from 0 till uh, almost up to n by 2, right? So what I'll try to do is I'll try to find these two elements as x will be equals to i and y will be equals to n minus i, right? So why am I running till n by 2? Because after n by 2, what will happen? X is all or x is actually going to become greater than y. That is, i is going to become greater than n minus i. So that is why I am only going to n by 2, right? So you always want that this value x should be less than or equal to y. That is why we are going to n by 2. Now that you have fixed the values of these two elements x and y, you will be able to figure out what are all these values. And you will be able to figure out whether a valid configuration exists or not. So, for these elements, for these elements, you already know that the maximum number of elements is anyways going to be 30. So, what will be the overall time complexity of this approach? You are going till n by 2, let us take it to be n. So, it will be O of n into 30, right? Because for each pair of integers like these i n n minus i, you are going only till 30 steps, right? So, in these 30 steps, you will be able to figure out whether these three last elements can form a Fibonacci sequence or not. So how are you actually going to verify a Fibonacci sequence? 
you know that x is always going to be less than equals to y right so what will be this element it will be equals to y minus x and the important property of this y minus x or this new element is that it should be less than equals to x so as soon as you find that this particular element is greater than x that means y minus x is greater than x at that particular moment you know that we cannot form a valid configuration from this particular stage right so let's say you formed an element z here now you have to do the same thing with these two elements you know that z is always less than equals to x so you will find the new element as x minus z and if this x minus z is greater than z that means a valid configuration does not exist otherwise i'll still try to continue so at most you will have to form 30 such elements and in those 30 elements you will be able to figure out that a valid configuration exists or not so this was all about this particular problem so the only two observations was you you need at most 30 elements to form an element up to 2 into 10 to the power 5 and if you fix the last three elements of the Fibonacci sequence you will be able to figure out all the other elements uniquely if they exist right so let us have a look at the code now so you will see what I have done is so you see that I have taken two integers n and k and I have initialized my answer with 0 so I use a recursive function here but it was not actually required you can also you do it with a for loop but this uh, helped me to visualize the case so I use this particular method now what I do is I run a for loop from 0 till n plus 1 so this is not actually going to run till n plus 1 you will see in a y y so I've taken two integers x is equal to i and y is equal to n minus i as soon as x becomes greater than i I just break from here so you can also make this change here and run it till n by 2 but you can also do it like this where x is greater than y you can just break right now what you can do is you can call the helper functions with the values x y and minimum of 31 comma k minus 2 so what is what are these two values 31 and k minus 2 so I'm using these values to determine what, what are the number of steps that I need to take more so basically at most I need to take 30 steps I have still taken it to be 31 uh, just for safe upper bound and let's say the last two elements were these this is the kth element this is k minus 1th element this is k minus 2th element so I'm tracking this particular position right as soon as this particular position reaches 1 that is the first element that means I've been able to form a valid configuration and in that case I can increment my answer so you see k minus 2 belongs to this particular index that will be the leftmost element and when this leftmost element reaches position 1 that means I have been able to form a sequence so you will see what I have done is uh, this is the base case or when post is equal to 1 or the position is equal to 1 in all of the cases I am trying to find the first element I know what are the other two elements I am trying to find the element that will be placed before these two elements so I find first by y minus x and if first becomes greater than x that means there does not exist a valid configuration from this point and I can just return otherwise I have called my helper function again with the value of first and the second value will now become x and position will get decremented by 1 now whenever the position is equal to 1 I can increment my answer and return from here now at the end I can just print the value of my answer so this was all about today's contest I hope you guys were able to understand the solution if you guys did then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the youtube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and to be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems so i see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet in case you're one of them then definitely consider subscribing it's always free of cost and you can always subscribe later if you don't find the videos interesting so share this channel with your friends until the next video drops keep coding stay safe bye bye